Hi, this is Julian for Pro Tools Expert. I've got myself a copy of Vintage Upright from the Easy Keys range by Toontrack. And I've been having a look at this for the last few days. And uh, to take a quick look at exactly what it is, it's a vintage upright piano virtual instrument. But it's a bit more than that. This Easy Keys thing, I hadn't really come across it before, but it seems to be uh, some kind of uh, automatic pianist, if you like comes with a big library of MIDI recordings of a good pianist playing and the idea I think is they're promoting is some kind of songwriting tool. I wasn't sure what I thought about this. I was a little bit sniffy to begin with but I thought first things first if it's a virtual instrument, a vintage upright piano, well does it sound any good? So actually playing it rather than using the MIDI, how does it feel? Because anyone who does play piano knows that an instrument has to feel right when you play it. With a little bit of tweaking, uh, it kind of it's okay actually. Is a example. You get the idea. It's uh, it's pretty good. It's quite bright. It's quite hard as uh, as an upright piano kind of goes. It's got a bit of real tack 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 to it, but it sounds great. And it's got it's got lots of that release characteristic that I like to hear. Uh, a, a, an old upright piano, one that's been around for a long time. They don't stop straight away. The dampers tend to be a little bit lacking, if you know what I mean. And you let go of a key, and and there's a little bit hanging on there. Unfortunately, everything seems to come with hours of reverb on it. The standard sound, like this, um, the parameter down here changes from preset to preset. And if you see, as I go through here, you get various things on offer. But the standard, listen to this. I don't want all that. So, of course you can edit it. Uh, it's a shame it's on there to begin with, to be honest. But uh, concert, I thought, was quite good. And it gives you a bit of control over there. And here we go. Far less, and if you want to get rid of a bit of that, just take it away. Better. It took a little while for me to get it feeling just right. However, if you switch on the dynamics, uh, you can edit it. And I found that tweaking it um, like so, I actually ended up taking it down quite a bit from from the top, just because if it's uh, if it's all the way up, it's very very dynamic. And um, I do play quite hard, so uh, setting it up right against your keyboard is really important, but this gives you all the control you could ever need. So that's good to see. It's, it's been set up with a player in mind. So what does it do in its kind of intended use? Because I'd imagine that an awful lot of time has been spent getting this right for uh, somebody who doesn't have a keyboard and has possibly got no intention of using it with a keyboard. The real nuts and bolts of it is in here. We have a MIDI browser. And this MIDI browser comes with, I'm going to come back to these music theory examples in a bit, but in here we have a big library full of examples. They've got a great, great pianist, and I thought this was good as a learning tool more than anything else. I can't see myself using this for writing, but I can see myself using it as something to steal good playing from someone who's a better player than me because whoever recorded this stuff is clearly very good indeed. Anything from just uh, single chords... Up the inversions there. Uh, I don't know, broken chords maybe. But things get far more interesting once we get into the styles. So, for example, gospel stuff. This was great. and This is very typical of what you'd find across all the styles. You've got some examples. It's kind of like a construction kit. Uh, here, for example... All of these examples go together brilliantly across the different variations, and the variations are consistent with each other. They get progressively more complex as you go up. So, for example, variation one in here.
giving it a bit more, if you see what I mean. Um, so these are great. You can take these and you can just lift them and drag them straight into the browser. And here we go. And this is the kind of stuff that you get. You've got MIDI. Uh, you've got chords. And the chord editor in this is absolutely fantastic. This is probably the best bit of it for me. Click on here brings up this wheel. This works around the circle of fifths. If you don't understand that, there's some great documentation that I'll show you in just a second. But you can edit these chords. So you've got a performance and then you can choose the chords. So for example, here we've got an ascending pattern going up. Well, what I could do is I could, I mean, obviously I can change the key. You can drag the, the MIDI out into a door, work on it in there. Here, for example, I'm starting on a C7. Well, I mean, I can, I can edit that. I can... I could possibly change to relative, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that I can do in here. And there's depth, that's what I really like about it. Rather than taking an example like this, I'm gonna remove that and I'll show you this. Here, you can just add chords to start working with in the tonic. So, I mean, we're working in C major. You can change the key that you're working in and other stuff down here. But if I wanted to, I don't know, do something like, we'll just go uh, CFG, great. I can split if I want to, so in here, I could then get into here, go back to that tool, and I could change the inversion, possibly. I could change the bass note, so if I wanted to do what that last one was doing, and chuck the third into the bass, there we go. If I wanted to go major minor here, possibly, and throw that into an F minor. There we go, and we'll see what that sounds like. And this is just straight chords. This is getting into more songwriting, as I'd understand it, rather than worrying about the performance. But it gives you plenty of control. And in here, I do like this because it does encourage you to play around with fancier chords. If you want to make it sound more expensive, you need to get into some of this stuff. If you don't know what you're doing with theory, this will help a lot. Definitely it will help a lot because of, and as I talked about earlier, the um, documentation that ships with it. If this circle of fifths means nothing to you, it's going to really help your songwriting if you get to know about how to spell chords, what to do with different chords. It's all very well having lots and lots of uh, amazing MIDI library to play with. But if you haven't got the knowledge to manipulate it, you're never going to do that much with it. Well, I've thought of that. And in the Tune Track folder in your applications, you've got the documentation. The documentation... Uh, you have the manual, but you've also got musictheorybasics.pdf, which is a great tutor. And, uh, for example, in here, it takes you through all of this stuff. So, I mean, uh, if you don't know what you're doing with chords and you don't know what you're doing with the circle of fifths, this will take you through all of it. It's very friendly, very accessible. And unlike trying to learn theory from a book, if you go in here, it gives you examples of what to do with these different chords. So, for example, in here, what do you do with uh, sixth chords? Well, sixth chords sound rather jolly, da 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 Listen to this example, and it references examples in that other part of the library that I talked about earlier. So here, in Madonna's Like a Virgin, uses a sixth. Great stuff. I now know what a sixth sounds like. Uh, if I want to know what an add nine sounds like, I can listen to number seven. And this is from a Shaka Khan song. So number seven. Uh, this educational side of it, uh, I think, I think possibly the best part of this for me. I thought this was fantastic. And I'd recommend anybody who wants to know more about chords and what to do with them and to improve songwriting through doing that, to use this, use it as a tutorial piece of software. Back to what can you do with the MIDI browser. In the MIDI browser, uh, you can set up your chords like this. If I remove these, if I want to get some stuff from the, from the library, uh, I don't know, go into country maybe, go into verse. Two. Lovely stuff. So if I take that and then I get something from somewhere else, this is something that really interested me a lot. Uh, if I take that from there and I take something from a contrasting style, let's go for, maybe I should just go for Latin actually, that's a good idea.
better. Okay, and I'll take this one onto here. What you can do, and I think this potentially is really interesting, it's quite clever, is that uh, you can copy and paste between clips. So let's say I like these chords, but I like this playing. Well, I can superimpose this style of playing onto these chords. I could just edit them, but if I go here and I go copy, and I go to here and go paste MIDI, a little bit of cleverness later, Clever. If I were to remove this one, let's say, and get something from somewhere else, let's say... That one. And if I wanted to get these chords and paste them into this Latin playing, I can go copy, and I can paste the chords into there, and here we go. It's, they're different lengths, but you'll get the idea. So from here... And this isn't working, and you very quickly run, run up against these limitations of how clever it can be. However, because it's MIDI, you can edit endlessly. Um, actually, it does give you quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of control over what's going on in here, just because you can control inversions. So you, you can take individual notes in and out. So if I wanted. I don't know, major chord, uh, but with no fifth, or if I just wanted, uh, I don't know, to knock individual notes in and out, then I can do that in here in this details bit. Um, I've got all the control that I need over what's going in there, and if I need yet more control, I can take it and edit it in software of choice, be that Pro Tools or something else. As well as the Vintage Upright, I've also been having a look at this Mellow Tune, which uh, you'll be able to see if I change this. It's a Mellotron, and... Um, all of these Easy Keys uh, titles seem to share the same library, um, which is, uh, they're very piano-centric, and a Mellotron is not a piano. However, uh, this, as goes, uh, is, it, is it a good Mellotron? Yes, it definitely is. I only use two sounds on a Mellotron. In fact, really, I only use one. The strings are just brilliant. And uh, here it's got the strings, it's got the essential flute, which I think is probably kind of unusable now, but... Uh, it's also got other stuff that I haven't heard. They do loop properly, unlike a real Mellotron. Oddly, it's got dynamics control, which I certainly wasn't aware that you could do any kind of dynamics on a Mellotron. I suspect you couldn't, but here we go. And uh, it's got all of the grunge and munge and distortion and everything that you associate with, uh, with a good Mellotron library. So um, here we go. First off, does it do the flute thing? Well... certainly does and as for strings there are just two sounds as far as I'm concerned there's three violins and the viola is also fantastic And all of these sounds have got that sad quality that a good Mellotron sample has. So uh, they, uh, they don't just play, they play in this kind of very mournful, uh, evocative way that they're bad sounds, but they're good bad sounds, if you see what I mean. Apart from this, um, there's loads of other stuff in here. I didn't even know there was a, a Mellotron piano, but uh, from, the, from the Sublime on the uh, previous one to this... Which actually, I think I have heard something like that before. It sort of reminded me of Cat Stevens records for some reason. And um, yeah, loads of other stuff in between. So if you need a good Mellotron, then uh, absolutely go for this. An awful lot of the stuff in the uh, in the browser is going to sound a bit odd being played on a Mellotron, but hey, in for a penny. So, Easy Keys, what do I think? Um, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I think that for the PDFs and the examples, if you want to improve your music theory knowledge, then 
get this. It, it really will do stuff. And uh, as a songwriting tool, it could be very useful as long as you avoid the temptation to, to not do anything to these pristine performances. If you start changing stuff around too much, it's, it's going to... It's going to need some manual editing or at least uh, a little bit of attention. It's, it's, it's not a magic bullet. But great fun, absolutely, and uh, I thoroughly recommend it. I've had a great time. Anyway, see you next time.